Silicon Valley Future Forum. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, I will give you some uh, brief ideas about uh, what I've been thinking about, uh, what will happen in the next uh, 20 years. So I'm thinking, uh, I thought about this problem uh, about probably five years ago, so when big data really changed the world uh, from then on, and uh, from big data, what's, what will be the next step? Uh, I, I supposed it should be artificial intelligence which makes uh, machine smarter. And uh, then people ask, what will happen in the next 10 to 20 years? I would say it be a super intelligent area in the future. So you probably have heard uh, Google AlphaGo, the uh, robot which played Go Chess, beat uh, world champion again uh, a couple of months ago in China. This time uh, it beat uh, Ke Jie, and last year it beat another one from Korea. So no matter uh, the first time actually people pay much more attention to the play, so last year. Even though the match was not perfect, uh, it's 4 to 1 uh, winning. But th uh, this year, the, uh, Google uh, robot got uh, make a uh, big progress uh, in two aspects. Uh, number one, there's all actually people still wonder uh, which one, which side will win. But this year, there's no doubt uh, the robot will win. But beyond that. Uh, there are two major progress. Number one, uh, Google reduced the power usage by about uh, 100, 1,000 times, a couple of hundred times, which means that uh, with the uh, only maybe less than 1% the computational power, computer can perform much, much better. This is one. And the other side is actually the, the level of AlphaGo increased about nine done, uh, degree actually increase uh, nine down up. So you're looking professional um, uh, go chess player and uh, the entry level professional player is like uh, uh, one down and uh, the top is nine. So you probably played for 10 years from one to nine, but after go takes only about one, one year and two months to, uh, to prove, uh, actually up mode itself to another Dying, so which means it's much has a much higher level than human. Uh, this suggests us that actually computer got their intelligence much faster than people do. But how c could computer do that? Uh, it doesn't actually learn things as we do actually. So it has three fundamentals to reach uh, intelligence. Number one is we as you call more law which means uh, the computational power actually got improved by about 10, time, 10 times in five years. So if you remember the first iPhone uh, got launched about 10 years ago, so it's uh, according to this uh, improvement, uh, today the iPhone speed is about 100 times faster than your first iPhone actually. So it's very uh, impressive. And the number two is big data. That's why we got uh, machine intelligence today instead of 30 years ago, because we don't have data. Even though you can purchase like 10,000 times more machine, you don't have data, you cannot do anything. So big data is important. And uh, that is mathematical model. So there is a term which is very popular today called deep learning. What is deep learning? Deep learning is a mathematical model. What will be next? So with the help of Moore law uh, in 2030, so if only helped by Moore law, uh, no big data, no deep learning, uh, computer can reach the intelligence between human and the amps. So that's basically the scenario. But with big data, so it will probably reach the uh, intelligence level of ourselves, our human being. And uh, with deep learning and uh, other improvement, uh, it could surpass human in many, many aspects. So more law will still keep on improving the speed of computer. So if you count only the number of transistors inside a chip, 
probably still have 10 years to go. Uh, so that's the limit. But if you think that we can uh, design some chips for specific application, like uh, for artificial intelligence, okay, we still have another 10 more years to go. So which means that we can keep this pace for about 20 years. And then we have more and more data. So in the last three years, uh, the data we obtained is more than all data accumulated from the invention of uh, characters to the time of three years ago, which means that every other three years we double the size of our data. And also with the help of deep learning, we can we know how to use those data. So that's the hope for the next year, uh, 20 years. So I would say in, in the future, it's like a one world machine. One super machine, not uh, physically uh, located in one location, but all machines will be connected, uh, all machines in the world will be connected. I, would, I call it a super machine, super intelligent. And uh, it will help us, instead of control us, I would like to say it will help us and uh, make the world much, much better. I would say uh, AI plus IoT becomes super intelligence. So uh, AI machine intelligence is in the center, it's like the brain of human. And we have lots of IoT devices, lots of sensors in uh, a broad medium from various, I would say, from um, pointer, so from maybe the very top, you can see a real sensor to detect the temperature, uh, draw bond uh, wearable devices, camcorders, uh, uh, device uh, furnitures, uh, so iPhone actually it itself is a, a sensor which can track all our behaviors uh, and all our, our intentions. Uh, the next uh, smart device to control the air conditioning, drone is a smart device. All these are like uh, eyes and ears and uh, uh, our uh, nerves, the, uh, sensor of, uh, of ner our nerve systems, uh, which can detect uh, and detect both detect and track all our behaviors. So that be what happened in the future. And in the future, uh, IoT can track everything. So here's an example from Amazon. They launched a device called Echo. On the back is a speech recognition and the dialogue system called Alexa. If you talk to to him say, uh, I want to buy some uh, golf ball, let's say. And he will, well, actually he will promote it, this uh, discussion and uh, ask you first. So uh, do you need uh, any more uh, golf ball? And you said very yes, and uh, he will ask. So whether you want to purchase the same brand uh, as you purchased before, and if you said yes in two days, Amazon will ship uh, golf ball, uh, about 2,000 golf ball to your home. So you can try this. This is a real uh, scenario I, I tried and I went through and I got the golf ball. So this is one, I track, it's not track your movement, but track your thought, track your behavior of purchasing, and track your, like, uh, how your, your family spend money and what's your activity. Uh, number two is, you, you know, it's a, uh, uh, face recognition. So uh, today you probably need a badge to get into this ballroom and, and to identify it's you. But in the future, you go to the registration and uh, uh, the register will, will just give you uh, your pass. Actually, even don't need to because on the door, probably there will be a smart uh, camcorder which can recognize you and know that you have already registered to the conference. And uh, so to track, to identify people, and also to track the peop uh, where those people will go. And uh, what does it mean? Not only give us the path to access somewhere, but also make the society secure. For example, in the neighborhood, if there comes some, tour uh, some terrorist, and uh, probably there are some camcorder uh, on our homes can detect, oh, this is a dangerous guy, probably we should report to police. We don't need to report to police ourselves, and uh, our smart home can do that. 
So this is the second kind of tracking. The third one is, is track uh, uh, some uh, behavior, not behaviors, but uh, the, our like body, the, the status of our body, but uh, ourself. So the first one you saw is a contact lens, which can detect uh, uh, the blood uh, sugar level instead of just have a uh, needle to get some blood from you from your finger, it's a contact uh, lens which can tell whether somebody has uh, uh, the, the, the uh, blood, uh, the, the, those data is correct or not. The other one is to detect uh, your, uh, uh, I think that's the next one, your cholesterol, yeah, to the on, on the hand to detect your cholesterol level. So yeah, you don't need to sample blood. And uh, the third one actually is a pacer, which record all the uh, activity of your heart. So this has already been happened. And uh, what even more, instead of track uh, our body, it can detect, uh, track every details, every details actually of our, our uh, metabolism. So we know that uh, our protein comes from uh, or synthesis by the or instruction of DNA, and then all the activity of body uh, depends on the production of DNA and uh, all these activities. And in, in the future, we can track all these uh, metabolism. Today, we can try if you purchase a Tesla, actually, uh, the company will track uh, the behavior and uh, the status of parts of the vehicle, but there's nobody, no hospital track uh, whether it's healthy, our, our body is healthy, or whether our organ is healthy. Nobody, no company can, or no hospital can do that today. But in the future, I think uh, we can do that ourselves, and we can keep provide those data to those uh, medical practitioners. And uh, today, you know, each uh, jet engine uh, has about 5,000 sensors which monitor the status of those engines. And every day it generates about 1.2 uh, terabytes of data. One flight with two engines generate 1.2 terabytes of data. But nobody track our body and we don't generate that many data for ourselves. And uh, even though you give this data to uh, doctors, Today, doctors don't know how to use that. It's not, uh, doesn't sound very good. We pay much more attention to our car, to the engine. We pay less attention to our cell. But in the future, I would say tracking is everywhere. So there are two companies we invested. Uh, number one is called Human uh, Longevity, which they do a whole uh, genomic analysis. Basically, they got your and gene and analyze uh, your gene and uh, then match your uh, personal data with uh, your uh, medical record and also the history of probably of your parents. Uh, mm -hmm. And then can tell you uh, is there any, whether there's any uh, risk or any diseases for you in the future. And they give you an iPad and it's basically like, a, mm -hmm. uh, I would say, a, the management card for yourself. Basically, from that card, the, even though it's big, you can get all the information uh, you need about your health. So that's what uh, human longevity do. And uh, there's another company uh, called Grail, come from the world, Holy Grail, so which is working on uh, early stage cancer detection or screening. Just by uh, take your blood sample. They don't need to do uh, CT scanning or MRI scanning. And uh, because when the, it uh, basically track uh, the metabolism, our, our body, uh, the cells of our body, inside our body. Because if anybody has some, uh, a small tumor inside their body, when the cell or tumor died, uh, it goes to blood, and uh, if you detect the blood and analyze the gene, because the gene of uh, cancer uh, cell is different from a normal cell, so if you track the change of 
genes, and they can detect whether this person has cancer or not. They can answer four questions. Number one, whether the guy has uh, tumor inside their body or not. Number two, uh, where will be the, the uh, where will be the tumor? Because they don't scan your body, but if the uh, tumor came from brain or come from lung, in different areas, the, the change of DNA is different. So they track the change of DNA and they can tell whether this tumor, even though it's very small, probably cannot be seen from X-ray. Uh, it, it can still tell you wh uh, whether it's from brain or from, okay, from, from lung or from somewhere else. Number three, whether it's uh, growth very fast or it's, uh, it's pretty uh, developed pretty small. If it grows uh, very fast, uh, probably you have to pay much more attention to that and uh, do uh, some surgery or some, have some other treatment. If it grows very slow, you'll probably just need to monitor it. Number four, whether it's sensitive to uh, radioactivity or some medication so that a doctor can give people advice uh, what will be the best treatment. So that's the, that technology is based on tracking our body, the, the cells of our body. And uh, here's a, let me see, I, I don't know whether I can, uh, if uh, I don't, yeah, I need the IT to help, but click on that uh, picture and the, there's a short video actually. Can, I don't know whether, can, can we do that? Who, who controls that? Uh, and I, I give you, the, tell you the story. Basically this is a, uh, I was, I would say uh, impl implant, implanted a small IC in people's brain. That, uh, this is the, uh, this lady, uh, the patient, couldn't control uh, her body, okay, and basically paralyzed and sit down there. And then after implanted a small chips inside her uh, brain, actually, uh, let me see, I go to the, Next one, tell you the uh, uh, electron actually that looks like this. Probably it's like in a chip of that size compared to a quarter. Put it inside the brain, and uh, that it touch the the, uh, the brain cells and connect uh, electric uh, uh, signal from the brain, and then people can use their brain to control the robot. So that from the Previous one, you can see that basically that robot was controlled by his mind, by her mind, so that she can drink the water. The robot can drink, give, uh, give her water. And then in the future, actually, probably we can have use our brain with the help of some uh, computers or chips. Uh, our brain, instead of sentence or our hands, to control machines and all other devices, just use your brain, use your mind. So that will happen in the future. So I give you these numbers, that means uh, electrons which has been embedded in those chips. And today they use, uh, the si uh, they have about 100, uh, which basically control 100 uh, our cells in the, in the brain. In the future will be, not, not today will, uh, the, the experimental one you saw it has about 100. Today we, uh, people reach the level of about 30,000. In a couple of years, we'll reach about reach the size of about one million, which means uh, about one million electrons uh, inside your brain that you can control medicine by your your mind. So in the future, I, I thought uh, uh, I, I said that everything can be tracked, and uh, how big will be the the market if IoT plus artificial intelligence? Okay. Become uh, like a major trend in the industry and the economy. I can give you some estimate. So this will be the third generation of internet. The first one is the connection between PC and we use uh, Intel CPU and uh, uh, Windows. And every year in the world, there are about 300 million devices shipped out with one billion user. And in the next generation, we have ARM and uh, Android, and uh, the market is about three times bigger. And uh, three billion users and uh, ship out more than one billion devices. 
And in the future, in during the area of IoT, people estimate there will be about 100 billion devices to 1 trillion devices shipped out. And uh, the market size totally will be about twice as much as the telecom size in the future, in uh, 2030. Uh, today, the telecom uh, market is about 3.5 trillion worldwide. It's a big market. And so in the future, IoT plus AI will could get about seven trillion. But today, internet, even though we all talk about internet, internet market size is less than 400 billion with all those companies in like, like Google, Amazon, and uh, Facebook, Yahoo, and so on and so forth. So, so in the future, there will be next Google and the next uh, uh, Intel. So this is for sure. So thank you very much. The conclusion is, and the greatest company in the world has yet found it. So you all have opportunities. Thank you. Silicon Valley Future Forum.